Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome out your host, Pete Holmes. Hello, everybody. 9.30 show. Fuck that 7.30 show. Who was here at the 7.30 show? What a great show. It was a great show. I know there's a lot of carryover. So I'm gonna do uh, fresh new material. Is it gonna fall off? Make your bet. Make your bet. It's gonna hit the meta mic. <laughs> these, uh, these cameras are for uh, meta, Facebook. So my soul is being sucked into Zuckerberg's butthole right now. <laughs> it wasn't worth it, guys. I did a joke selling out the sponsor for a 30% laugh. <laughs> They're gonna be like, Pete, the sponsor would like to have a word with you. And uh, it wasn't worth it. I sold it out for a bad cause. Happy to be here. You, you guys were over there, weren't you? Yeah, see? Learning faces. <laughs> Some of you are in the same seats. All right, I'll fucking start. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you want to turn this into a job much? I'm like, dance, monkey, start. Let me do this for the cameras real quick. Welcome, everybody. This is to the 2022 New Face Showcase for the Just for Laugh Festival. Are you guys ready for some of the best new comedians in the country, in the world? Yeah! All right. This first performer coming to the stage is a very funny performer coming from Connecticut. Let's start clapping right now. Start clapping! For the very funny Ali Colbert, everybody, Ali! Thank you. Hi, hi. I'm about to be the meanest American Girl doll you've ever seen. Do you guys like serial killer stuff? Serial killer shows? <laughs> yeah, the women. <laughs> Kill me! <laughs> I figured this out. I realized why women love serial killers so much. And it's because it's the first man we've ever seen who can plan. <laughs> and execute, for that matter. Um, I'm watching this, I'm like, I'm pretty sure Ted Bundy could have handled making a fucking dinner reservation, Brian. <laughs> You know what Jeffrey Dahmer could have done? He could have planned my birthday party, okay? <laughs> I think we need more female serial killers, you know? We're out there. Um, <laughs> we're just getting away with it. We get out blood stains every month, so. <laughs> oh, wow, period jokes hit in Canada. Um, <laughs> I don't mean to be sexist, you know, I just, I just am. <laughs> like, this is how sexist I am. If I was on Shark Tank, I would just never make a deal with any of the female judges. You know, like I'm looking at Lori, I'm like, whose secretary are you? I'm sorry. <laughs> have, we seen, have we seen Barbara? She's just a senile shark. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you pitch, this woman responds with her own dementia. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I have an app. And she's just like, my mother told me never to trust a Jew. <laughs> and I won't start now. No deal. I feel like I'm a feminist until I hear Mark Cuban open his mouth. And then I'm just like, shut up and listen to daddy, okay? <laughs> daddy is talking. Dad, dad. 2022, we still have a long way to go, you know? Like, this still happens. A dude hooks up with a bunch of girls. Oh, he's a player, you know? I hook up with a bunch of girls. Lesbian. <laughs> In this day and age. I, uh, I am a lesbian. I, I recently, it's not a Katy Perry song. I. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I just, uh, I just got engaged to my girlfriend and... Okay, it's a whole album. Um, 
I proposed, uh, because I'm the boy one. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah, I'm the boy one, curveball. There's a reason my girl one isn't here tonight, all right? That's because I don't let her leave the house. <laughs> Stay at home, girly. We got some rules in my house, okay? Dinner on the table every night, seven o'clock, hot! Don't mess that up, girly. She really wanted to come. I'm like, well, daddy wants to play. <laughs> All right? Daddy's night on the town. Sometimes she tries to like chime in on my business. I'm like, a ba ba ba. <laughs> Leave that to the boys. <laughs> You just sit there and look pretty, all right? Until I'm ready to put another man's sperm in you. Thank you. Thank you for that. You have to learn how to hit on women as a woman because women can say sexual comments to each other all the time and it's not perceived as a come on. Like I could be like, wow, your boobs look great in that. And, my, and people are just like, thanks girl, you know? <laughs> I, I can go a step further too. I'm like, wow, I really want to eat you out in that dress. <laughs> and they're just like, girl. <laughs> Thank you so much, girl. Like, I want your clit in my mouth. Girl. <laughs> girl. This is, a, this is a real thing. I'm serious. Straight girls send each other nudes. This is real, to check them. It's like, check if they're okay. So I was on the receiving end of this shit growing up, okay? So like my friends would send me a nude and be like, you think this is good? You know, and I'm just like, oh yeah, that's a good one, Chloe. That's a really good one. She's like, you think it'll work? I'm like, oh, that'll work. That'll do the trick. I'm like, you know what, why don't I come over there? Let me do lights. I'll come over there and do lights. How about that? Like, you know what Brian would really like? How about a video? Fuck a photo. Let's do a video of us kissing. Wouldn't he fucking love that? I was, uh, I was in a sorority in college, and that was quite the conundrum, to be a lesbian in a sorority, you know? Because everyone's cheering all the time. They're like, we are sisters. You know, and I'm just like, not by blood. <laughs> we can still do stuff. What is this? We would, play, we would play spin the bottle, and if a girl spun the bottle and it landed on another girl, everyone would always be like, oh, redo. I'm like, uh, let's stick to the rules. How about that? I respect the integrity of this game. Pucker up, Jenna! <laughs> you guys, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your show. Allie Colbert. All right. One more time for Allie. And let's keep it going all the way from Indiana. Give it up for Emil Joaquim, everybody. Emil! Hello, thank you. How are you guys? Good, good. That's good. Good. Good is good. That's great. I'm all right. I, uh, I just got back from a friend's lake house. Whew. I'll say this. Uh, if you're ever worried that you can't say anything anymore, go to a lake house. <laughs> They're saying it. Okay. <laughs> They're saying it, and they're wearing those sunglasses. You know those sunglasses where you're like, oh, he cries during the anthem. That's what that is. That's, I fucking hate those sunglasses. I got too much eyebrow for those people. I can't do it. That whole culture to me is tricky. Like I, like I stopped trusting people with boats. You know, like I, I just can't do it. And like, like, why do you need to go all the way out there? You, like, no one goes out to sea to say progressive thoughts. <laughs> no one's in the middle of the ocean like, ah, 
I miss the Obamas. Like, it's fucking never that guy. <laughs> no one's fishing like, we should have more genders. No, it's, it's two genders at the lake, only two. <laughs> 50 kinds of trout, but fucking two genders. <laughs> It's weird, it changes you, it does. I've seen you all change, it really... It's a weird human behavior we all have. Like the closer you are to like a large body of water, the more your morals just fucking bend. Like it's, it's why people love Florida, it really is. Because what is Florida? It's a good physical vacation, sure. Yeah, it's nice, it's tropical, good weather, yeah. But it's also a mental vacation for people. Do you know what I mean? Like. Like they get to get off the plane, they take a deep breath, and they're just like, <sighs> retarded. Like that's. <laughs> them, them, not us, because we never say it anymore, right? No, kidding. No one's saying it. Some of you are for sure saying it. Uh... <laughs> I like going home, it's been, it's, I, it, it's fine actually, you got me, it's, I've been going home a lot, it's okay, I've, you know, I've been trying to see my parents as people, don't do that, uh, I don't recommend it, because here's what you'll realize, is they're not going to match the level of depth that you're looking for emotionally, like they're just, they're just not going to meet you there, you know, it's a generational thing, like we just got this luxury to like discover ourselves and figure out who we are, like they just didn't get that. My dad's an immigrant. He lived through like a civil war. He'd walk to school with like dead bodies in the way. Like, you can't do that and then be like, I think I'm bisexual. Like it doesn't <laughs> work. You gotta put food in there first before you think about how good a dick would taste. There's levels to it. <laughs> But I, don't, I like having both extremes in my life still. I know it's not a popular opinion, but I live in New York City now, it's amazing. You can be whatever you want, it's incredible, I love it. But I like going home to a little judgment still. It, it, I like a chip on my shoulder, you know what I mean? You need to have both poles to keep you in bounds, otherwise you'll just keep spiraling. It's like, what is, like, like I went home and I asked my dad if we could get oat milk, and he was like, it elects Bernie Sanders. <laughs> I was like, oh, yes, yes. Yes, I have conflict in my life now. It's great. You need that. Like, your uncle thinking you're gay is character building. It's, he's your antagonist. It's good. <laughs> I just want to be fun again. That's my whole thing. I just want to be fun again. That's what I worry that we're losing. Like, I look at other young people my generation. Like, it's, it's not good. Like, look at young people now. They're all very intense people. They all have like very well-formed opinions on very serious topics. It's not a good sign for a society. Like, like every time I see like Greta Thunberg, she like testifies at the UN. I'm like, she should be doing Molly right now. What the fuck is she doing there? <laughs> She's in pantsuits, she looks like Hillary Clinton. I'm like, is that fun? Do we want that? No, like we've ruined her, we've ruined Greta. She's in college now. She's not gonna be a fun college kid. No one's gonna invite her to a party, like. Like, no one is gonna finger Greta Thunberg, okay? You can't, you can't penetrate the voice of a generation. It's wrong. It's like shooting an eagle. It's like, oh, it kills the spirit. <laughs> That's what I want for the world. I want Greta to squirt. Like, that's... <laughs> shut the fuck up. That's a nice thing to wish. That's... That's a beautiful world to live in when Greta squirts. That's how you know we have world peace. Like, someone needs to fist Greta so Syrian refugees can have homes. Like, that's beautiful. <laughs> All right, I gotta go. You guys were so fun. My name's Emil Kim. Bye. Emil Wakim stealing my fist Greta joke. I was gonna do that when we reload the cameras, but 
I just cross out squirting grit. Okay. Uh, wasn't he great? One more time for Emil, please. And keep it going all the way from New Jersey. The next comedian is Pink Fox, everybody. Pink Fox. Bonjour, Montréal. Or like I say it back home, what's up, you sexy motherfuckers? That's right. When I start, I like to say two things, let you know a little something about me. First things first, I'm transgender. That's right. It, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I never know what it's going to be. I'm always ready to duck. So, but I like to say that, you know, because if you can't tell me the pills are working, I'm getting my money's worth. You know what I mean? Because this is not cheap. Second thing, no, I don't like the word tranny. Sometimes people call you a tranny and things like that, you know. But I got to let you know something. It's a porn term. Like white people, you wouldn't introduce your black friend Keisha as your ebony friend Keisha, would you? You'd be telling on yourself. That's right. That's right, I don't like the word tranny. You see, I much prefer build a bitch. I'm a build a bitch. <laughs> so I get to put my parts together, you know. Never fails. Every time I say I'm transgender on stage, I feel my crotch get hot. People get to stare into my crotch area. <laughs> Trying to see if they can find the print, you know. But you're not gonna find the print of Houdini with the dick. You're not gonna find the dick, you understand? <laughs> My guy friends always asking me dumb questions and shit. They see me in the skirt, they say, she's like, Fox, uh, what do you do with it? I give him a dumb answer, so I say, easy. What I do is I tie this motherfucker to a brick, I throw it through my legs real hard, let it come over my shoulder and click it like a seatbelt. <laughs> That's right, if I tell you, I'll tell you something, no, I'm black, so if I pull my shit out, it'll be like the scarf trick, it just keep coming, you know what I mean? <laughs> Oh man, that's right, I'm from the East Coast, I'm from Jersey, baby. If I told you what part, you might get nervous and leave, that's right. I'm from Camden, New Jersey, that means tuck your purse and wallets, that's right. The set gonna go good, get butt naked and stick them up, nigga, it's a robbery. Real shit, that's right, I'm half Italian on my father's side, you know. I got a fat fucking father, anybody else got a fat father? That's right, just me, couple people, couple people. Everybody else's dad a bodybuilder and shit? Yeah, let's go. Cool. My dad's the type of fat when he sees his favorite food, he wiggles his fingers like, ooh, donuts. That's right. And my dad's a criminal too. That's right, my dad's a fucking criminal. I used to visit my dad in federal prison when I was a kid, you know. So needless to say, he suffers from that hereditary disease I have in my family called toxic masculinity. You know what I mean? Shit is crazy. I came out to my dad, I said, hey dad, I wanna let you know something. He said, what? I said, I'm transgender. My dad said, fuck, what's that gonna make me look like and shit, right? I snapped into my comedian shit. I said, overweight, you fat motherfucker. <laughs> How you been looking, heavy set? <laughs> it's crazy, man. It's a different story on my mother's side though. You know, my mom is like a docile woman. She's very soft spoken. You see, I was raised Jehovah's Witness. That's right, ooh and shit, that's right. And now that I have you all here, Pete, bring me out my watchtower and awake so I can, no? Okay. <laughs> Bullshit, not anymore, not anymore, you know. But I told my mom, you know, she's real soft-spoken, she's so sweet, I said, hey mom, I just wanna tell you something. I said, I'm transgender. My mom said, we didn't have that when I was a kid. What the fuck? I said, yes they did, they just weren't coming and talking about the shit, you know what I mean? Like I'm pretty sure it was people getting ball gagged and butt fucked too back in the day, but they weren't coming and talking about the shit. Nowadays, they march with the shit on. I live in LA. I see the motherfuckers at the Pride Parade and shit. I say, oh shit, there go Frank. I didn't know Frank was in the BDSM. <laughs> I call out to him, yo Frank, I see you at the club on Tuesday. Frank looked back and said, woo 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 woo, because he had the shit in his mouth. <laughs> Where I'm from, a sub is a sandwich, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh shit, that's right. Men always get tense when I say I'm transgender. Fellas, you have nothing to worry about. I don't like dick, that's right. <laughs> Can't stand dick, I hate dick so much, I might get rid of my own shit, it's in debate. That's right, I hate it. You know, when you're young and you're growing up and you're effeminate and things, people call you words and shit, people call you the forbidden word, you know, people call you faggot, shit like that, you know. And I can't lie, looking back on myself back then, I was a bit faggoty, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, they convince you and shit, they would be like, you know, you, you, you gay, you know, because I'm AMAB, I'm a signed male at birth, you know, I keep it real with y'all, I'll let you know. And they used to say to me, you might like men. I say, well, fuck it, let me try it. You know, I sucked a dick before is what I'm telling you people. I sucked a dick. All right, I sucked two dicks in my life. I sucked two dicks. I hear the judgment. I sucked three dicks, all right? That's it. 
Sucked three dicks in my life, couldn't get with it. I don't know what it was, I think it was a small dick. Ship kept in the lost my mouth like a Jolly Rancher. <laughs> like ladies, you know when you're in a nightclub and you have one too many cocktails and she trying to find a straw in that motherfucker? Just... <laughs> Can't quite get your tongue on it, you know what I mean? And then it's too much theatrics. You gotta make noise and shit for your guy and shit. You know, make him feel good about himself. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> I'm not good at that, I can't do it. That's right. Ah, anybody else got a, anybody got a fetish in here? Fetish people, fetish, anybody, fetish, no? So right here with the hat, fetish, no? I do like Americans. Uh, what, what, what's your fetish right here, my man? No fetish. No fetish? <laughs> Tiger Woods hats and polo shirts, motherfucker, that's your fetish? <laughs> I like to jack mine off on a knife hole, my fucking... Okay, cool, that's what's up. I got a fetish, I tell y'all, but you can't tell nobody if I tell you what my fetish is. You can't tell nobody. I got your word, right? Thank you. I like fucking guys' girlfriends. It's my whole thing. <laughs> I will fuck your girlfriend, nigga, no, no problem. I swear to God. It's my way to get back at men, you know. Because I can't throw a spiral pass, but I throw some dick, though. That's right. Lost this side of the room. I might have fucked half of these people's girlfriends. I'm so sorry. <laughs> No bullshit. My girlfriend's always trying to sample this dick like Costco and shit. It's the truth. Always asking me questions and shit too. You know, complaining about their boyfriends and shit like that. Hey, hey Fox, I'm having such a problem at home. I just really need somebody to talk to. And I'm gonna tell you something. I'm the best of both worlds, right? I'm a hybrid, fellas. It's a wrap for you. That's right, I'm the new model. Yeah, cause I give a fuck. When she comes home, I wanna hear about the day. You don't like that bitch Christine? We don't like that bitch Christine. You understand? <laughs> That's right, so my homegirl and shit, tell me, I wanna go out, I wanna talk about my boyfriend, he's not doing what I need him to do. I say, okay, she said, let's go out for drinks. I said, no, that's gonna make you too vulnerable. I don't wanna go out for drinks, let's go out for ice cream. So she said, okay, cool. So we go out for ice cream. She said, I don't know what it is, Fox. I cook, I clean, I suck his dick, he just won't eat my pussy. I said, for real? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> hey, I want to thank y'all so much. I've been Pink Fox. Pink Fox. We have uh, another comedian. <laughs> Consulting this piece of paper, I see we have another comedian. Are you guys ready for another comedian? <laughs> All the way from Oakland, California. Give it up. For Andrew Orolfo, everybody, Andrew! Hey, what's good, Montreal? Can we, can we agree that this year's been a little bit better? Is that okay? Can we admit that? I feel like this year has been pretty good, for me at least. I feel like it's been good. It's been all right. Music festivals came back. That got me excited. Because I went to Coachella this year, but y'all knew that when you saw the haircut. <laughs> this cut is actually how that festival got started. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know that? Legend has it, two dudes on LSD touched buns and lights appeared on a field. Did y'all know that? But I went, I went this year. And if you don't know what that is, or you've never been, all Coachella is, that's just a music festival where you spend like $500 to fight with your girlfriend. That's all that is. <laughs> that's all that is. And I love doing that joke, because it really hits for one person, always. <laughs> always. I did that joke last night at a show, some dude just stood up and yells out, yup! Danielle, and then he left. He didn't watch the rest of the show. <laughs> but I went, and when I went, I learned this. I learned that the company that runs Coachella also runs a sister festival that happens like a week later. I don't know if y'all know what it is, but it's called Stagecoach. And if you don't know what that is, it's, it's still a music festival, but it's actually a country music festival where you still fight with your girlfriend but it's racist. Y'all know how they be. <laughs> I'm feeling good. I, I saw my mom recently, and I got, a, I got an immigrant mom, and she moved to the States a little later in her life, like right before I was born. So in like a weird kind of way, me and her, we like came up as Americans together. 
Like, I don't know if any of y'all are experiencing like that, but me and my mom, we both got our driver's licenses within the same week. And then about a month ago, she started vaping. So it's been real fun <laughs> getting to see her growth, you know? <laughs> she said her next move was to do shrooms and start DJing. I was like, what? <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, I've never been more proud of my little girl. <laughs> and I'm from the Bay Area in California and my mom's, yeah, yay. My mom's been there the whole time. That's where she's been. So she's always been a very open-minded person, very progressive, very liberal lady. But I'll go ahead and say she might be a little too liberal with it, you know? Because her thing right now is she's just out there tweeting, you a bitch at Ted Cruz, like every week. That's her thing. <laughs> That's her thing, because she's a little too old to march, but she found out she could just tweet and vape all day and make a difference. So she's been doing that. But my mom's, my mom's wonderful. She was, she was honestly thriving in the whole quarantine situation. Because this is the first time she ever got to work from home and she got to focus on new hobbies. She got really into sewing. Like her big project, which is so fun pattern like masks and then give them out to like the family, her church and the community, which was like super cute. But she did make a mask for me and it was just the American flag on the front. <laughs> and I was like, that's interesting. It's like, yeah, I love it at home, I love it there, but you know that doesn't go with like any of like my outfits, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was like, why did you make this one? And she was like, oh, it's so when you wear it out right now, people won't be racist towards you. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's fine, but they can still see my eyes. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you remember this, mom, but that's like our main thing. That, that and we squat weird. That's how they find us. <laughs> but I get, I get why she did it. I understand it. It's because it, right now, coming out of the whole pandemic thing, it, it definitely made it scary for Asians in the US. Like, I don't know if you all seen the videos out there of Asians getting hated on, but I would leave my house every day in fear that I would get into a dance battle. Honestly, that's just what I gotta worry about. <laughs> that's all I gotta worry about. People be trying to battle me all the time. It's very, it's very frustrating. It happens way too often. <laughs> like, I just wanna go to a club or a venue one time, just one time without some dude coming up to me real aggressive, putting his hand on my chest and then doing a backflip. Like, I'm so tired of <laughs> responding to that. And it's because I don't dance like that. I don't. And people try to battle me and I have to tell them like, hey, yo, I don't, I don't even, I don't dance like that. And they're like, but you got Jabberwocky face. They don't even have faces. <laughs> but this is, uh, this has been fun. And I don't know if anybody feels this way coming out of everything, but I got really jealous of Koreans. Anybody else? Anybody else? Oh, okay, all of you are just okay that they just got super popping out of nowhere? All right, fine, <laughs> fine. Also, I'm jealous of like the fun ones, not the Dennis Rodman one. <laughs> and I'm just jealous, because at, at, I'm Filipino and I thought we were coming up in the entertainment industry and then Koreans were just like, nope, hold my soju. And now they're just everywhere. <laughs> It's wild, I'm just jealous, it's all love. I'm just jealous because they just like took the letter K. Did y'all notice that? They claimed that, that's theirs now. Like they took the K like the LGBT community took the rainbow, you know? You see either of those two things in the front, you know it's, it's, it's popping inside, right? Like think about it. K-pop, that's a good time. K-drama, that's great, y'all love Squid Game. Some of you are like, wow, that was, that was Korean? Hell yeah. <laughs> K-Barbecue? Incredible. Tell me Kmart wouldn't be doing better right now if that K didn't stand for Korean. <laughs> Filipinos can't do that. We can't have P-Barbecue. That's just like wet. <laughs> but because of all that, I'm gonna say this. It's looking bad for white supremacists in the US. They're losing a lot. And I'm calling it right now, 2025, 
KKK, that's just gonna be Korean, 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 I'm pretty sure. All right, y'all were fun, bye. Andrew Orofo, everybody, Andrew. This next comedian, let's start clapping right now. They are from Tennessee, give it up for Laura Peak, everybody, Laura Peak. doing Montreal what's up oh I'm so happy to be here I'm from Tennessee like you said I'm from the south uh, thank you very much oh my god they're all wearing confederate flags no I'm just kidding um, I'm from the south I moved to California a couple years ago and I like living in California but I gotta say I miss how trashy you're allowed to be in the south of the United States okay I'm allowed to be my dirty ass self the last time that I went back home I was not back in Tennessee for 12 hours before I heard a woman cough until she puked in, in the bathroom of a Waffle House. And I was just like, baby, I'm home. You know, I made it. They're playing my song in there. Uh, I should say that that woman was me. 100% uh, me had a good Thursday night, all right? You can do whatever you want in a Waffle House bathroom. You can sleep in there. A lot of people don't know that. Hot tip if you ever go down south. I love being from the South. I, uh, I, it, it really is the most fantastic place in the world, but I do like that everyone is hot as hell in California because I've discovered that my favorite feeling in the entire world is being complimented by hot women. <laughs> it's all I've ever wanted. I want a lady with like tattoos and a backpack to tell me she likes my shirt. It's my whole fucking goal in life. <laughs> in Tennessee, it's never her. It's always like the lady that works the front desk in my dentist's office, you know? She's just like, oh my God, I love your bag. <laughs> I'm like, now I gotta throw this fucking bag away. Jesus Christ. Please don't like my bag. You have frosted tips. Take it back, Cheryl, you know? I miss that I'm allowed to smoke cigarettes down there. I can smoke freely. I was, I've been smoking since I was a baby, I think. Just born with a Virginia Slim hanging out of my mouth. Total piece of shit. Uh, I've tried so many ways to quit smoking over the years. One of the things I've never tried is the stop smoking pill. You guys heard of it? It's called Chantix. Makes you clinically insane. <laughs> Three of the actual side effects of Chantix are hallucinations, delusions, and night terrors. <laughs> they put it on the box. I feel like that's a pretty high price to pay, you know? You're just like, Laura, I heard you kick the habit. I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> well, I heard that that broom over there and the vice principal of Zimbabwe are trying to murder my favorite member of the A-team. So, it's kind of like who could smoke at a time like this, you know what I mean? Chantix, you can't smoke if you're hiding from demons in your neighbor's crawl space. <laughs> Thank you, Chantix. You saved my life. <laughs> Started my working life there, had my first job ever in Nashville at a water park called Nashville Shores when I was 15 years old. Don't know if you've heard of it. It's the home of Water, Sun, and Family Fun. Um, <laughs> if you haven't been, please don't go. It's all piss, okay? They're all... <laughs> Never go to any water park. I'll pee, sometimes poop, if I'm being honest. Uh, I enjoyed my time there, but I did learn a lot of very important lessons from working at a water park, and I do want to share some of them with you now. Number one, there is no right or wrong response to being called a bitch by a man who is both soaking wet and eating a corn dog. okay? That's, <laughs> that's not even a real person. You can say whatever you want to that guy, gloves are off. He's a cartoon character. Number two, if you're ever checking bags at a water park and you find an enormous bag of weed, you just get to have it, babe. That's just yours, okay? They were like, take it. There was no step two. It was the highest summer of my life. My eyes were smaller than they are right now, if you can imagine. Huge boobs, tiny eyes. Nice to meet you guys. Okay, number three. <laughs> Let's get it out of the way, you know what I mean? Number three, and maybe most importantly, if you think that a really mean guy might be a little bit too fat to fit into an enclosed water slide, it is cool if you just let him figure that out on his own, okay? <laughs> Do not call him out. He will call you a bitch while he eats a corn dog. He does it every single time, all right? <laughs> Terry's not messing around on the slides. He's big and he's wet and he's mean. He came to fight. I love going home and talking to my friends down there. I have some of the dumbest friends in the world. Uh, <laughs> I was having a conversation with one of my guy friends the last time I was home, and he said to me what I have to believe is the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life. He goes, Laura, I'm so jealous that women get to look so beautiful when they orgasm. I was like, my guy, um, those ladies are not, they're not coming. Um, 
I don't know how else to say it. They're simply not. I look insane when I have an orgasm. I look like your dad trying to start a very old lawnmower, you know? <laughs> so it's a really, ah, gah, 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 gah. let's get some friction on it, you know? I look like one of those videos of a really jacked lady trying to squash a watermelon between her thighs. Have you seen those? Just really intense concentration. There's one bead of like anime sweat coming down my forehead. Oh. And then just Gallagher, you know what I mean? Watch out, front row. They're in the splash zone. They knew what was going on. Okay. I do need to talk to the women in the room for just one second, okay? And ladies, I know we're back out in the world. Everybody's happy. We're back, you know, we're back doing things. But I need to talk to the ladies, and we have to agree that in the year of our Lord 2022, there is too much pee on our public toilet seats. Can we agree with that? A little enthusiasm, maybe. It's gross, okay? And guys, I know it's worse for you. I know it's like a war zone in there. I don't even think they have toilets. I think it's just like a room <laughs> with a drain in the middle, like a prison shower. Real Shawshank situation for my fellas. They're just waffle stomping it down. Okay, but gals, it's getting pretty bad. I think what we need to do this year, we need to stick together. We need to sit it fully down every single time, okay? I wanna feel your ass warmth on my ass when I go in after you. Instead, what do we got out here? We got these fucking hoverers, yeah? <laughs> these athletes just <laughs> using their giant quads to <laughs> levitate over the toilet seat like some sort of fucking piss witch, just <laughs> casting little pee pee spells for us lazy girls to clean up, all right? Some of us don't have the core strength, okay? Some of us are pretty drunk every day, okay? Have you considered that? Mama needs to sit. All right, I love you guys. Thank you so much. Have a great time. Laura Peak, everybody. Laura Peak. This next comedian coming to the stage comes all the way from Salt Lake City. Give it up for Skyler Higley, everybody. Skyler! Hey, how are we feeling, everybody? How are we doing? Shut up! Shut the fuck up! Sorry, that's a character I'm working on called My Father. Hi, let's get started. Any racists in the crowd? Make some noise. Are we. Trapped? You should be afraid like these people. Everybody's afraid, white people, are afraid to be racist now, afraid to be called racist. I want to make a haunted house. It's just for white people. And the idea is just black people popping out. Don't get ahead of me. Just accusing y'all of saying the N-word. I think that'd be very scary. The whole time you're walking through, no, 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 I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I would never, I would never, she might have said it, I would never say that. Walking out like, oh shit, I was afraid for my job in there. That was scary. <laughs> this whole set's gonna be very racial. And I know some people don't like that internet, but I have to talk about race because I was adopted by white people, so that's half of what's wrong with me. <laughs> I mean, I tried to have fun, right? Like I'd get sent to timeout. My parents would be like, go to timeout. I'd be like, uh, interesting. Did you know a disproportionate amount of the people incarcerated within timeout? <laughs> African-Americans. They call it an allowance, I would call it reparations. We had fun. Here's the thing about white parents that you might not know. White parents hate it when you sing Negro spirituals just because you have to do chores. They hate that shit. Bro, straight up, I'd be unloading dishwasher like, swing low, sweet They tried though, they tried their best, right? They wanted me to have a black experience of black culture as a black man in America. So we celebrated Kwanzaa. <laughs> Just like none of the black families in America. <laughs> and I want you to picture it, right? Kwanzaa, it was me, little black child, two adult white people, all three of us just wearing full African dashikis. <laughs> Even as a kid, I was like, are you sure we should be doing this? Cause I don't know. My mom straight up looked like Nancy Pelosi in that bitch. I swear to God. <laughs> and it was like the late 90s, right? Like, you want to raise your black son with a sense of cultural identity in the late 90s. Don't celebrate Kwanzaa. Celebrate the OJ verdict. That's all you got to do. <laughs> they tried. 
they were just too white to get it right, you know? Like one time my mom sat me down, she was like, Skylar, there's this word uh, that references black people. It's a racial slur, it's a very racist word. You should never say it, it's called the N-word and you should never say the N-word. I looked at my mom, I was like, no nigga, you should never say the N-word. <laughs> she was like, no, 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 I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I would never. Some people, when they're adopted, they find their biological parents. I have a relationship with my biological dad. I don't know my real mom, and I have this fear of finding my real mom, that what if she's really hot? <laughs> no, don't get uncomfortable. This is not your struggle. This is mine, okay? <laughs> Every time I see like a fine, older black woman now, I'm like, hey girl, do you want to take a DNA test? Because... <laughs> I know no matter who she is, she's got two qualities that I like, right? First of all, she's a black woman. Secondly, and maybe more importantly, I already know she doesn't want to have kids. So I feel like... <laughs> My mom's a MILF, a mother I'd like to find. All right, moving on. <laughs> uh, I was raised Mormon, that's the other half of what's wrong with me. I know you guys are like, a black Mormon, can that exist? And it can't, so I quit. <laughs> now, Mormons didn't let black people into their church until 1978, that's true, 1978, that's late. <laughs> that's late, first Star Wars came out in 1977, that's late. <laughs> it's a very weird religion, it had stuff about it that I didn't really like. I didn't like how we would like read the Bible all the time, right? In the Bible, there's Jesus, he's fucking around. And Jesus has all these apostles, right? But the Bible always said that Jesus' apostles always had these like white names, right? What were his apostles' names? Peter, John, James. I looked it up, there was an Andrew in there. Yeah, an Andrew. 2,000 years ago, in the Middle East, and Jesus was hanging with a motherfucker named Andrew. There was an Andy in the cut? I don't think so. <laughs> think about how that sounds. Hi, I'm Jesus of Nazareth. Not Allentown, Pennsylvania. Nazareth. I was born in a town called Bethlehem. Oh, and Jesus, who's your friend? Oh, this? This guy right here? Yeah, that's Trevor is who that is. <laughs> Yeah, we got Trevor, Corbin, Ethan in the cut, the boys, you know? Yo, the Bible makes it sound like Jesus was running a fraternity. That's what it sounds like. Which kind of makes sense, because if you read the New Testament, which I have a lot, it's basically a bunch of stories of dudes being like, dude, our bro, JC, bro. <laughs> Fucking legend, bro. Bro, 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 JC was always turning water into white cloths, bro. Fucking legend, bro. Bro, one time, JC went up to this blind dude, right? And was like, dude, stop being blind. <laughs> and then blind dude stopped being blind. We're like, JC, you're a fucking legend, bro. Bro, one time, JC was fucking dead, bro. <laughs> Yo, this was like a crazy spring break, right? <laughs> so JC gets caught up on these like bogus charges. Right, and they like killed him, they made him carry his own cross, but you know JC killed it because he never skips leg day, right? <laughs> and then he like died, he was like dead, it was like sad as dick, right? But then, bro, freaking three days later, bro, JC pops up out of nowhere, he's like fucking rally, bro, we're like JC, you're a fucking legend, bro! The thing I hated the most about that church, I would always see pictures of God, paintings of God. God was always depicted as a white man. That fucked me up. <laughs> right? Because why is God always depicted as a white man when in reality, God is probably not real? All right, that's been my time. <laughs> Good up for yourselves. Skyler Higley. All right, let's keep it going. This next comedian comes to us all the way from Chile. You guys ready? Let's clap. All the way from Chile, give it up for Fabrizio Copano. Hello, how are you? How are you doing? Uh, yes, 
I live in New York, but I'm actually from Santiago, Chile. Uh, thank you. Uh, and I was there uh, at the beginning of the year because a friend of mine became the president of the country. <laughs> That's not insane, can you imagine that? He's 36 years old, this is all true. He's the first millennial president, and I don't think it's a great idea. <laughs> I don't think we are ready for this task. I mean, let's be honest, like he's probably gonna quit after a month <laughs> because of too much anxiety, you know, he's gonna be gone. I wanna travel first. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's great, he's a great guy. Uh, he invited me to his inauguration. And can you imagine that? It was a lot of fun, crazy, but a little bit awkward for me because I didn't vote for him. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you agree, but you can't vote for a friend. It's kind of weird. I mean, I can't vote for someone who drew a dick in my forehead when I was 16. <laughs> I mean, like, that guy should run this country. That's, <laughs> that's the right person. Uh, yeah, I'm married. I have a wife. Uh, she's from Texas. Uh, and Texas is, is a weird place, man. It's a weird place because it's one of the few places in the world where they hate Latinos and they are Latinos. <laughs> I mean, how they do this, you know? You talk with anyone on the street and they're like, oh, this goddamn immigrant, what's your name? Jorge Gutierrez. <laughs> uh, the last time I was there, uh, uh, her uncle, he said to me, he's like, hey, don't criticize this country. You're, you're not American. And he said, America, this way that I thought was a joke, you know? But there's actual people out there, they say, America, like having a little stroke? When they're saying the name of the country? I mean, why they do this? I mean, it's not weird. Like, first, there's not other countries doing this. It's not like, Canada, you know, no one. <laughs> like, Croatia, no one else is trying this. And then if you decided to do this, you have to commit to that shit for the rest of your life. Because it's like America every single time. It's like, how are you gonna pay with American Express? You have to go all the way. <laughs> and then, and this is what makes me upset. It's like, I am America because the name of the continent is America. Technically, everyone that was born in the continent of America is an American. Come on, Canadians, join me on this fight. <laughs> Do you think it's crazy that one country decided to just take the name and we all agree immediately? We were all like, yeah, sure, yeah, why not? I mean, listen, like the, the, this name is like if one of the Avengers decided to call himself the Avenger. <laughs> and the rest of the group is like, wait, what? <laughs> That's not how it works, man. When we all together, we are the Avengers. And this guy's like, no, no, no. Listen to me. I am the Avenger. <laughs> it is weird. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, they're also anti-vaxxers. Yes, they don't like the vaccine. And I'm a huge fan of vaccination. I have to say, I've always been a fan, you know, like, and, and I feel so represented by my vaccine. I don't know if it happened to you. But I'm a Pfizer, and I feel so Pfizer. I feel... I'm such a Pfizer person in general, you know? I consider myself, I'm such a Pfizer, I mean, I'm such a fucking Pfizer. I'm just a Pfizer guy. It's just, it's just a, I mean, I, I'm Pisces. I feel we're more Pfizer than Pisces. I feel <laughs> so Pfizer. It's just, it's just a great name, you know? Like, Pfizer, they put a P and an F, they are like, Pfizer. <laughs> they know what they're doing. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, they don't like the vaccine, and uh, I was like, why? And uh, one of them told me that they don't want the vaccine because they think that Bill Gates is trying to put a microchip in their brains to control their minds. And I was like, if you think that Bill Gates want to control your mind, you should let Bill Gates to control your mind. <laughs> He's way smarter than you. This is a chance for improvement. This is good news. <laughs> By the way, why people are so concerned about being mind control? Like, oh, they're gonna control my mind. Who cares? Let's be honest. After the last two years, one month of mind control would be nice. You know, no thinking, someone else taking decisions for you. Especially when you try to look for a movie on Netflix and you're there for an hour. Would it be nice if a voice in your brain is like Shrek 2? You can go like, thank you, Mr. Gates. Um, we appreciate your love for fine cinema. Uh, I have a child, I have a little baby. Uh, yeah, um, okay, that's enough. Um, I was like, oh, a Latino with a baby? Meh, not big surprise. 
uh, it's the law, you know, we need to have one. Uh, no, I love my child, it's, it's so much fun. It's, it's just like I'm new at this, so I'm still trying to figure out what kind of dad I wanna be, you know? The only thing I'm sure is that I don't wanna be the kind of dad who's like a friend for his kid, you know? I feel I can't be his friend because I'm fucking his mom. <laughs> What kind of friend did that to you? <laughs> Just a horrible friend. It's like, I love you, good night. Then go to the next room and fuck your mom. <laughs> Why are you sleeping? I don't think that's fair. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm trying to save some money because I have a baby. I don't think about cryptos. Anyone here have cryptocurrencies of any kind? Oh, thank God. I just hate that shit so much. It's just making me so angry. Shut the fuck up. Uh, no, no, thank you for, for saying, because now everyone is pretending that they never heard of it because it's going down, you know? Uh, no, I hate cryptos because of this, because I'm from Latin America, and every time I was making any kind of money, people was like, oh, that's not real money. You have to make dollars. Dollars is the thing. But then I moved to the US, and people were like, no, 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 now you have to make jit coins and blip coins. And why you keep moving the goalposts for me? Why are you making this shit harder? I'm gonna stick to pesos. I think pesos is the best currency. Pesos is number one. You know why pesos is great? It's because it's the only currency that we put a bunch of zeros to make us feel that we have more money. <laughs> have you seen how pesos works? It's great. You go to the store and you're like, hi, I have 5,000 million pesos. <laughs> Give me a Coke and nothing else. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Have a great night. Fabrizio, everybody. Fabrizio Cabano. This next comedian comes to us from Phoenix, Arizona. Keep it going, everybody. Keep it going for the very funny Brian Bahi. I, I'm indigenous, um, and when, thank you, uh, <laughs> when people find that out about me, they're like, do you have a traditional indigenous name like Crazy Horse or Sitting Bull or something like that? And I'm like, no, I don't. Uh, but if I did have one, it would be Chipotle Bathroom Code. <laughs> that is very much my vibe, uh, which is cool. Um, I'm Asian passing though. Uh, which means that like everybody assumes that I'm Asian, you know, like my family included. Um, what, it's like, it's great, I love it. Um, one time I was at IHOP just like eating pancakes by myself as you do like when you go to IHOP. And the waitress taps me on the shoulder and she's like, hey, this guy over here paid for a meal. And I looked over to see who it was and it was just like an older white man who was wearing a hat that said Vietnam War on it. <laughs> Like, he clearly just thought I was Vietnamese, you know? And I will be Vietnamese any day of the week for a short stack. <laughs> um, another time, I was in a deli just, like, waiting for a sandwich to get made, and, like, I was just standing there, an Asian woman, like, walks in. As soon as she sees me, she, like, stops in her tracks, like, locks eyes with me, and then immediately, like, starts, like, crying. And I'm just like, okay, I don't say anything. And then after, like, two minutes, she comes up to me, and she's like, I haven't seen you in three years. And I just like looked at her and I was like, yeah, work has been crazy. <laughs> like, I don't know if you remember this, but you do owe me $20. <laughs> Uh, I'm gay, too, uh, so I'm on Grindr, and uh, <laughs> Grindr is interesting, for sure. Uh, on, when you're on Grindr, you get to, like, select your, like, subgenre of gays that you feel like you identify as. You know, it's like, are you a twink? Are you a bear? Um, I selected that I was a daddy, and only a daddy, and nobody on Grindr liked that. <laughs> I got a lot of messages that were like, what makes you think you're a daddy? And I would just respond and be like, my two beautiful children. <laughs> Samantha and Charles. Um, I think it's funny when people criticize how unrealistic porn is, you know? 
I think it's funny when like somebody watches porn and they're just like, she could never afford that home on a substitute teacher's salary. <laughs> It's like, that's not the point, you know? Um, I did, however, come across the most realistic porn I've ever seen. Uh, it was a stepdaddy, stepson scene, which is not my preferred scenario, but it was full length and free, so I was like, yeah, beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> so the scene, it starts out, the stepdad and stepson are like in their living room. The stepson is like, I'm so bored. And then the stepdad is like, well, you can't go outside because of the pandemic. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, this is a period piece. <laughs> like the stakes in a stepdaddy stepson scene have never been higher. <laughs> so then the stepdad is like, well, what do you want to do? Do you want to play like poker or something? And then the stepson is like, I hate poker. And then the stepdad is like, well, we can make it interesting. We can play strip poker. So then they proceed to play poker for 20 minutes straight. <laughs> Just like 20 unedited minutes of them shuffling the cards, like dealing the cards to each other, looking at it and being like, yeah, I have nothing. <laughs> and then there was a moment when the stepson is like, what if mom comes home? And then the stepdad is like, she won't be home for a while, she's at work. And I'm like, wait, the mom is an essential worker? <laughs> You know, I like, I like take out my pots and pans and start like banging them in solidarity. <laughs> I do think the only thing that would have made that more realistic is if they brought up the protests that were happening across the country. <laughs> you know, like the stepson is like, I'm gonna go downtown to this protest. It's really important to me that I do it. And then the stepdad is like, you can't go. You know, I have a pre-existing condition. <laughs> And then the stepson is like, I knew you would say that. I saw you posted a black square. You think that does anything? <laughs> and then the stepdad is like, well, I also donated. And then the stepson is like, really a one-time payment or recurring? <laughs> and the stepdad is like, one time. <laughs> stepson is like, I knew it. I'm not even horny anymore. <laughs> The stepdad is like, I'm not even horny anymore. And I'm watching it like, yeah, neither am I. I'm actually gonna go volunteer. I think it's great that land acknowledgements are becoming more commonplace, you know? However, I do think there is a time and place for land acknowledgements, and one of those times and places is not on Zoom. <laughs> I was working for a company for like most of the lockdown, and the head of HR, who's very much not indigenous, started doing land acknowledgements during our weekly Zoom check-in meetings. And there was one meeting where he was like zooming in from his five bedroom home in upstate New York, and he's shouting into his camera, sorry if it's difficult to hear me, I can't figure out how to turn off my indoor waterfall. <laughs> We are on Lenape land. <laughs> I feel like land acknowledgements are gonna get co-opted by corporations very much like gay pride. I'm dreading the day that I walk into like a Warby Parker and there's like a huge banner and it's just like, we're on stolen land. <laughs> and then right below that, it's like, you know what else is a steal? Two frames for $49. <laughs> Because I will fully walk out of there with four frames. <laughs> That's my time, everybody. Thank you. That's Brian Bahi, everybody. Brian Bahi. Okay, so this next performer, let's start clapping right now. She is from Brooklyn, New York City. Give it up for Hannah Burner, everybody. Hannah! I just turned 30, thank you, nine months ago, thank you, and society really tries to scare the shit out of you when you turn 30. They're like, if you're not buying hundreds of dollars of tiny serums, 
If you're not fucking your face with a jade roller, <laughs> if you're not snorting lines of collagen, by the time you turn 30, you're just gonna become Prince Philip, <laughs> who is super ugly and very dead. Um, and commercials are brutal. Commercials are like, do you have a fine line? Ew. <laughs> do you have a gray hair? Disgusting. <laughs> Men are never gonna notice you anymore. And I'm like, that sounds so peaceful. <laughs> just to be able to walk home at night without a worry in the world. I can't wait till I'm the age that I'm just unkidnappable. How freeing. <laughs> I have some intimacy issues. I don't like cuddling. It's a lot of logistics. If you're the small spoon, you have to get into like a weird fetal position. Move your hair so it's out of his face but still looks cute. <laughs> and he always puts his hand right here, so you have to go, Aah! You gotta suck in, and God forbid a little air wants to come out. <laughs> it's game time, ladies. You clench like you've never clenched before. <laughs> Let's say you pivot, you put your head on his chest. You're like, this is safer. But as you're doing it, you feel his chest go up and down, and you're like, oh my God. It would be so cute if I matched my breath <laughs> with his breath, and we became one soul to take on the world together. But then as you're doing it, you kind of forget how to fucking breathe. And then there's no air going in or out. It's unsafe, it's unsafe to cuddle. You know what's also unsafe? Shower sex, don't do it. Guys and girls like it different temperatures. Girls like it lava hot, because we're related to Satan. And guys like it lukewarm, because they're boring. And if you go to his place, he will not have conditioner, which is chaotic energy, or he has a two-in-one, which should be called zero because um, I feel dirtier after using it. <laughs> then you're in the shower and he's taking up all the hot water and you're freezing your tits off and you're like, how did I become Jack at the end of the Titanic? Because there's room for me here. There was room on that fucking door. Anyway, so then you take your hair also and you have to find time to put it at the back of his shower wall. This is female graffiti, mark your territory, pee while you're doing it. <laughs> Once a guy texted me to sit on his face, there is a lot of logistics to that as well. You don't sit, guys, you have to hover. <laughs> like you're at a porta potty at Coachella, okay? And if you drop, horrible things could happen. <laughs> Do I like the fact that my uneven labia could suffocate a tiny man? Absolutely. <laughs> We went there. Um, I just think sex in movies is, is the problem. It's so unrealistic. It's the same scene. Two people bust down the door. They start going at it, going at it. She's having multiple orgasms. They're breaking stuff. They're ripping stuff. The guy will turn and just like kick over a lamp. And I'm like, don't fucking touch my home decor, okay? <laughs> I want realistic sex in movies. I queef all the time. And I've never heard one queef in a movie. And when I say I'm queefing, I'm farting. <laughs> oh, that one you guys, <laughs> but I'm telling you if it's a queef because men get confused easily. Um, I want realistic sex where you're doing doggy and he accidentally hits the wrong hole and you have to be like, no. <laughs> but he's pretending like he's in a dark elevator just clicking every fucking button. I want realistic sex where like, okay, you're riding a guy, right? <laughs> This is how I ride, I'm 30, I don't give a shit, one leg. Um, I want realistic sex where you, you lose your rhythm and then the dick falls out and you snap it. A lot of dick snappage in Canada, who knew? Okay, there's no way to segue this, but um, I've been really into politics lately. <laughs> I've been on TikTok and thank you. I don't know if you guys know, but the United States is not doing well, but I think I've solved our problems. Some people think, you know, abortion should be illegal no matter what happens. Some people think guns don't kill people, people kill people. I have an edit. Guns don't kill people, men kill people. Thank you, one person. 98% of mass shootings, ya boys. I didn't make it up, it's a fact. So this is what we do. We give the guns to the women. <laughs> Guys, think about it. Women are busy. We have a six-step nighttime skincare routine. 
We're going on hot girl walks. We're doing our nails. Do you know how long that takes? Then you like can't do anything. Like clap if you have long nails. See, they could barely fucking clap. Like they're not shooting up a school. I posted this theory on Twitter because I like to fight. And one guy was like, it's the women's fault. They don't give enough blowjobs. But I'm listening, I'm working on my listening, and I was like, I, um, I don't believe in that because like Ted Bundy murdered all those women while he had a girlfriend, that's not true. And then someone else was like, no, it's the mom's fault. She didn't raise him right. And that guy's right. She should have had an abortion. <laughs> All right, here we go. Clap real loud, all the way from New York City. Everybody give it up for John Marco Sorezi. Hello. Hi. Uh, uh, my name is John Marco. Uh, I, I, I've lived in New York City for about 12 years, which is good. I, I, I get a lot of my material just from existing there. <laughs> Like, uh, I was on the train once, it's a true story. I was on the train, there was a couple across from me. The man said to the woman, what do you want to do for dinner? And I swear to God, the woman said, I think that lanky Jew is listening to our conversation. I am Jewish. I don't make a big deal out of it unless I'm losing an argument with a person of color. <laughs> but I did one time have a German bartender and somehow it came up, I was Jewish, and he was like, oh, I'm so sorry for the Holocaust. <laughs> Which really threw me off guard. Because like, how, how am I supposed to respond to that? No worries. <laughs> Don't let it happen again. I didn't know. I was just like, could I get a free beer? <laughs> and he said, no, I can't do that. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> how many Holocaust does it take? <laughs> and he said, no, 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 I want to, but my boss would get mad. I was like, I get it. You're just following orders. Now, I'm, I'm not gonna talk about COVID tonight. I, 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 it's become so divisive. I mean, I, I had a good friend. He was so anti-vaccine, I had to stop speaking to him because he died. <laughs> but social distancing was hard for me because my father's Italian. And if you don't know Italians, we hug, we kiss, we get fired for it. <laughs> Because it makes non-Italians very uncomfortable. <laughs> like, my roommate's not Italian. I remember the first time my roommate saw my Italian father and I kiss each other goodbye. He was like, ew. <laughs> Do you kiss your dad in public? And I was like, yeah, yeah. You know what would be weird? If I only kissed him in private. <laughs> I was like, hey, Pops, let's get out of here. <laughs> For a private goodbye. <laughs> and I obviously was not born in Italy, but in the 1930s about my, my great-grandpa Luigi, which is his real name, my great-grandpa Luigi and my great-grandma Donkey Kong immigrated to America. <laughs> when people ask me where in Italy is your family from, I'm like, Nintendo. <laughs> No, to be honest, I don't know a lot about my heritage because I never even met my dad's dad, which is a tradition I hope to continue with my son. <laughs> my parents got divorced when I was seven days old. So like most kids, my first word was mama, but my next five word told me to tell you. <laughs> Ha ha ha.
Real quick, round of applause if your parents are divorced. Make some noise, clap it up. All right, all right. May I, may I ask, how old were you when your parents got divorced? Uh, 15. 15, so it was your fault. It's, <laughs> the hardest part is watching your parents date. Like, I, I just met my dad's new girlfriend, and we have a lot in common, like being born in 1988. <laughs> it's weird, he likes dating younger, I like dating older. One time we went on a double date, it looked like the family dinner I never had. <laughs> but everyone in the restaurant was staring, because they thought my dad was playing footsie with my sister. And I was getting handsy with my mom. And then my dad went to kiss me, and I was like, let's do this in private. <laughs> I am pro-choice, which you knew. You knew that. You knew that already, because there's certain beliefs that just go together with other ones, right? Like, there's no such thing as a sexist trans ally. I've never met anyone who's like, trans women are women, and they belong in the kitchen. I was very upset when Roe v. Wade got overturned because I have three little sisters who should have been aborted. <laughs> I'm trying to be a better ally. Like, uh, I live in this neighborhood in New York called Harlem. And if you don't know Harlem, it's a historically black neighborhood. I live across the new Whole Foods on Malcolm X Boulevard, which is what he would have wanted. And I was in Harlem for all of 2020. I, I did uh, several of the marches for Black Lives Matter. And I, I remember one, we, we were marching down uh, uh, Malcolm X Boulevard and we were chanting, you know, Black Lives Matter and no justice, no peace. Fuck these racist ass police. And then we got to the block where I live. And suddenly everyone started chanting, Hey, hey! Ho, ho! These gentrifiers have got to go! <laughs> and I don't know if you've ever had a march turn against you <laughs> while you were in it. But I did what a lot of white liberals do when we find out we're part of the problem. I chanted harder. <laughs> the first white guy I saw coming out of Whole Foods, I was like, you don't belong here! Which really confused him, because he was my roommate. And he was like, Jamarco, what are you doing? I was like, Jamarco, oh, do we all look the same to you? And then I marched right in the face of a police officer, and I was like, could you escort me back to my apartment, please, officer? <laughs> That's my time, everybody. Thank you very much. Gianmarco Sorezi, everybody. I've, uh, I don't wear glasses. I've never wanted to wear glasses as a stand-up just to tell a joke and then remove them <laughs> and stare with murderous rage. At one point he looked at me and I was like, I hope he can't see without his glasses or he fucking hates me. That was intense. It was a brilliant, murderous Jeff Goldblum. Give it up. And everybody, that is New Faces number two, 2022, just for laughs. Thank you so much for being an amazing crowd. We'll see you next time. Good night.